Hey guys and gals, Xavier here from the Earth, signing in from just west of the city of Mutare in eastern Zimbabwe, where this video will begin. And like these lovely Zimbabwe gentlemen here, we are also heading to Harare. I have not done too much too much research blah, too much research about the journey to Harare or even the journey north of that uh, towards Mozambique, but I have heard of one part specifically, and that is Christmas Pass, which is what we'll be uh, doing first here in this video. So at the risk of starting with a showstopper, let's do it. People are not honking at me. One of the many weddings I've seen this weekend in Utare. Christmas is over, but I'm still looking forward to this, what should be a awesome day in Zimbabwe, as most of them have been so far. So we've made it to Rusape. And hopefully we can find a place for the night.
So I did eventually find the accommodation in town. And I guess the mistake I was making was the terminology. Since apparently this is not a hotel, it's a guest house. Not sure what the difference is, but it is apparently different in the minds of people here. I just ate some food and scored some water because tonight there will not be any debate about whether something is a hotel or a guest house. It's not my final destination. It is Gosho Park where apparently you can camp there. So I just made it to the uh, gate for getting inside the Gosho Park and camping and they tell me that it's 30 baht to enter the park and then 100 uh, to camp. So it's very expensive, it's like 17 or 18 dollars or something US, so <laughs> pretty bad deal. So. Uh, looks like we're not going to be camping tonight But there is a town uh, 10 kilometers further Manondera uh, Let's see if we can find something there or maybe a wild camp in between So we've got a potential spot here Time to get a better look of the area I was about to climb this but upon further inspection, maybe not the greatest idea. a peaceful night of wild camping I didn't sleep great but slept enough to 
have energy to bicycle into town for breakfast. So a scorpion and a frog are looking to cross the creek. And the scorpion proposes to the frog, let me get on your back, swim across the creek so we can both get on the other side. But the frog says, you're a scorpion. You'll sting me and I'll drown. The scorpion says, nope, because I'm on your back. If I sting you, then we would both drown. And the frog thinks about it, says, oh, fair enough, makes sense, get on my back. And the frog starts swimming across the creek. And halfway across the creek, the scorpion stings the frog and it begins drowning. And the frog asks the scorpion, why did you sting me? The scorpion says, I'm a scorpion. Thankfully, there weren't any scorpions enjoying the heat underneath my tent this morning, which is probably a sign of a good day to come as we head towards Harare, Zimbabwe's largest and capital city. So I ended up spending like four days here in Harare to check out the city, but also because the hostel here that I'm staying at, Small World, had really good internet. So I took advantage to work on some videos and get them uploaded. But it's time to head back on the road despite the fact that it's the first cloudy day in a long time. We'll still try to enjoy the day as we head northeast of Harare. Every time I see one of these signs leaving a city, it says, please call again. But I'm not sure which number or who I'm supposed to call and what we'll be talking about.
solar panels. So to my sort of surprise, my room actually had Wi-Fi, which was good because um, I really wanted to call my parents because I hadn't talked to them in a little bit and my sister, but also because I needed um, their help uh, with a potential fraud or f banking error on uh, behalf of Scotiabank who I've stopped banking with for several years, but I received an email uh, with a, a statement balance saying that a credit card or a line of credit had been opened and that uh, I was owing $120. And obviously, I mean, I hadn't opened anything. And since I'm in Zimbabwe, I couldn't really call them. So what I had to do was get my mom to call them so my mom had to uh, call them and put me on speakerphone over the internet. And it was a really, really frustrating experience. Uh, all of the customer service reps were just really lazy and unhelpful and were just trying to always constantly pass it to another service rep uh, who would always find a loophole to not help me. Uh, and then eventually the last one said, oh, this is not a direct line, so I can't help you, even though he could clearly hear me and I could answer any security questions. So yeah, so just very frustrating and just really shameful uh, uh, customer service on, on part of uh, Scotiabank there. And uh, so I ended up sending some emails. I, I wrote to their uh, Facebook. I mean, I'm just looking for anybody to, to really help me and it's been uh, kind of uh, frustrating. So that's uh, something that can happen when you're traveling. But when I was bicycling around and just kind of seeing the, the people here in, in Zimbabwe uh, and the fact that, you know, they're, they're re resiliently uh, living in a, in a country with, you know, a lot of problems. Uh, that stem from, you know, organizational issues and poor economy and, and stuff like that. It kind of puts everything into perspective that uh, uh, it's not that big of a, an issue and that uh, things could be uh, a lot worse for me. So, so I'm feeling grateful. And also, just it was just a reminder that it was like the first time that I was really like stressed and uh, um, upset in Zimbabwe. I've been having just a great time. So hopefully today, as we continue northeast, will be another uh, such day.
So this is the town of Kotwa, where we rode 130 kilometers to reach yesterday. That was a lot of work. Let's get breakfast. Good you. are heating up here as we're now about 15 kilometers away from the border with Mozambique which is the next country we'll be experiencing on Hum of the Earth. As we continue our journey cycling through Africa. Hope you guys enjoy this journey through northern Zimbabwe. And if you'd like to uh, help support this journey bicycling through Africa, I'll be putting a link to my Patreon in the description below the video. I really enjoyed my time in Zimbabwe, some unique landscapes super friendly and fun people and great weather but fear not as your experience in Zimbabwe for the viewer is not over next up on the channel we'll be having a few videos uh, from Harare city tour in history tour of the University of Zimbabwe as well as a video entitled shopping in Harare which uh, I think is a fun one to check out and then after that we'll be heading into the part of Mozambique that separates Zimbabwe from Malawi which is a little hint of things to come and before attempting to cycle through Africa I bicycled from Canada, where I'm from, to southern Patagonia in Argentina. And all those videos are available on this channel. And if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I went and everything that I got to see and do, I have that map available over at my website, followthehumoftheearth.com, where you can click on the different locations and see the blog posts and videos I've made of these places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures bicycling through Africa, you can do so by clicking on the red subscribe button below the video and clicking on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.